are ready with the draft. The players are going to make their picks. Let's see what they have this time around. So Mia Pixel going with the first ban. What do you think it's going to be? I think they're probably going to ban Adagio. All right. So let's see if Rome is right. Humanist, what, is your, what are your thoughts? I don't know. I mean, at this point, it could be the Adagio, but we'll let it come out. It'll be the, <laughs> the sky right there. Um, and with this rebirth, they're able to take out, like you said, maybe the, the Fen. If that's uh, the ban, then of course Adagio will be picked up immediately, I guess by Media Pixel. But this is the point where rebirth really have this uh, important decision to make. I mean, rebirth of Empire does have that option. You know, leave both Fen and Adagio. I mean, they might just want to ban out the Fen because it is so strong in Mowgli's hands. Rome, do you think they will go for that, or do you think they might just leave both of them up? If I were them this one, I wouldn't ban out the Finn. Instead, I would ban the Adagio. Because like we've seen like what they can actually do. And having Media Pixel be able to have so many comps built around Adagio instead of just maybe one or two around Finn, they do they do like cancel out that big option of like them running different comps that they've done so well with this tournament so far. Right, Media Pixel able to run Adagio in multiple roles in the lane, in the jungle, as a roamer. And by banning that out, Rebirth Empire will cancel that strategy, but they do see the Rona being immediately picked up by Media Pixel. And they've actually played this Rona really well. Rona has been extremely, like, opportunity throughout this entire tournament. Most of the teams that do pick up Rona, they're able to, like, wait out that early game, play out that passive game, and then just get into this late game with such a dominant hero. And, like, this is something that we noticed with, like, from EU and an NA comparison, it was, like, EU plays passive comps really well, and they know how to play around it in the early game, just to get to that late game power. Most certainly, and right now, Rebirth Empire, they do take the Arden, so leaving that Arden pick up, I mean, is this something that Media Pixel expected to happen, or do you think it's something, you know, Rebirth Empire had it planned? Rebirth of Empire actually did like a very good counter pick this one. Um, Arden and Scarf together is great against this Rona, like being able to use that mobility from Arden's Vanguard for Scarf, to get away, to get back into the back line just to keep poking on and on. But so now Media Pixel is going to have to be able to find two heroes to be able to engage and live long enough. And Catherine's actually not a bad pick against Scarf. We can also throw in like another hero, probably, I would take a Glaive actually. I've never seen a Glaive play this <laughs> Well, far. we see the Finn once again and the Celeste coming out. So not the Finn and Saw composition, but the Finn and Celeste coming out. And one of the nice things about Rira's picks was that, you know, you, they are preventing the Rono and Scarf combination, which is we've seen to such great effect in these past few games. Yeah, being able to pull from that back line and, and having Rona just jump in and being a, such a bruiser, it actually works out really well for them. Yep, so let's see what the last pick of Rebirth of Empire will be. Any thoughts on this? I would take um, Glaive. All right, so Glaive, you know, maybe protecting the Scarf a little bit. Just able to potentially punt. Oh, they take the Ringo. So, do you think it's going to be Ringo or Scarf in the jungle? Um, against the Celeste, I would actually put up Ringo in the lane and I'll throw the Scarf down to the jungle just because Ringo has all that mobility to run around those core collapse. And then in the jungle, it's like it's going to be a very slow fin with a Rona that's able to jump in. So, that most of the time, if you're able to kite back and just keep unleashing skills, you're able to get this Rona down pretty far before that Finn actually gets there. All right. So we do have the two compositions on both teams ready. Are there any last thoughts you have before you hop in the game? Item-wise, I'm really hoping that this Ringo starts, break, uh, starts up with the breaking point, and that's going to make such a big difference, running to like a really tank-heavy in terms of Finn and Rona. And like with Scarf, as long as he's able to farm that CS, get those items, and like uh, Broken Myth is going to be really well for him. But then on Media Pixel side, is like, they're gonna have to be able to delete somebody really quick. Like what they're gonna want is Celeste is gonna get a standard build, but Rona is gonna have to be able to jump in, pretty much use sustain, but she has to have enough damage that if they're not being able to kite back, like weapons with Shiver Steel is gonna be awesome for them. Warhorn on that fin is gonna be really good too. Most certainly, and taking us into the game will be Four Court Jester and Tasty Bacon once again. Go ahead. All right, thank you, Z Kent. And game number two is about to be upon us in this best of five finals. I'm Tasty Bacon. On my left is Four Court Jester, and we are getting set <laughs> for the second game here. Again, I knew I'd get you one of these days. It is, <laughs> it is, of course, Media Pixel versus 
Rebirth of Empire. All right, so Finn coming into this. Last round, I said, you know, possibly could be that Adagio, and it really fell flat. Uh, so this time, it's just like, all right, Caster's Curse, Caster's Curse, don't say anything, don't say anything. All right. Dagio's out. Finn is back into it. Uh, but, you know, these, as they said, you know, these comps are actually rather strong. I was also thinking for a Glaive for the last pick because we do see actually a lot more Glaive up against uh, Celeste. And that actually has some really good uh, success rates because when you're in that lane, you can use uh, the Afterburn set up a little bit more of a lane gank. And I'm actually a little surprised we haven't seen a lot of, uh, a lot of Glaive this weekend overall. Yeah, it is still a little bit strange because Glaive is still extremely useful. And, you know, Rome was saying he would have liked to have seen it here. I would have liked to have seen it here as well. Yeah. You know, with that Finn especially, you use Glaive early on. I mean, yeah, obviously Finn is very difficult to kill. Mm -hmm. But you cut either Afterburn Finn into or away from a fight, it's going to take him so long to get back to it. Or you Afterburn one of his allies away from Finn, and it's going to take him so long to get back involved. So... All right, well, these guys know best. That's why they're into these finals. We're going to be jumping into the game here in just a moment, guys. But Ringo and Scarf doesn't exactly feel like it's going to be, uh, you know, something very useful, especially if Rona gets ahead because of the rushdown capability. She just jumps into there, into the fray, red mist, and uh, all of a sudden it's, you know, uh, a bad situation. Ringo's going to have to split one way. Scarf, uh, neither of them have, you know, big mobile Battle options the yeah begun. it's gonna be a little bit interesting to see how they go about this but it's uh you know we did we did hear from media pixel yesterday after they confirmed their spot in the semifinals that they still had more tricks up their sleeve so maybe this was one of them the fin with the celeste we'll have to see all right, so Media Pixel Esport here on the left hand side, up 1 0, but Rebirth of Empire here off to the side on the, the right. Net Toilette, they're into the lane up against the Cavalifar. And I gotta say, Cavalifar last round just did exceptional work uh, into that lane. So Pamataro and Mowgli. Mowgli is going to be uh, somebody, again, that we're gonna be keeping our eye on. When we saw this Finn a little bit earlier, he had some massive control in and around the area of this gold mine. And of course, you know, those three man anchor hooks. I said this a little bit earlier. You, you're not used to kind of grouping up or dispersing up against the pulling nature of that forced accord. You could be finding yourself in a terrible situation. And it was actually a scarf and Finn combo bit earlier that kind of just dominated those fights. Yeah, and now, I mean, it's still gonna be able to be really effective. You obviously have Finn who can pull people in with the forced accord. And as long as they coordinate it properly, Cavalifar can drop a core collapse right underneath, you know, right in front of the fin. So they're going to get pulled in by that hook and then immediately get stunned. So it's it's so difficult to try and react to, and it can pay off in spades if they can connect with it here. That's going to be the thing I'm going to watch for, because that it will just be such an awesome looking play to watch. It's not uh, something that we get to see a lot of, uh, especially in these finals. Wow, actually Cavalifar taking some good uh, damage right there, but he's able to just uh, turn that back around with the help of Mowgli as well. But uh, again, like over the course of uh, many games, we do actually see that combo quite often. So now, if we actually do get to see that perfect execution, uh, it's just going to tickle me pink a little bit. Yeah, it, that's why I'm really hoping that's what we get to see. You know, as soon as I saw the Celeste pick coming through to join the Finn. Uh, that was the first thing I thought of was, man, a forced accord into a core collapse would just look so pretty. And we'll hopefully get to see it come out here. But uh, of course, Rebirth is going to be hoping that we don't see it at any point in this game. All right, Pomotaro and Mowgli. I'm always impressed that Mowgli can kind of cast that stuff from so far away. But Pomotaro is just not looking good. Into the fray is going to get him out of the fire. But, you know, is Mowgli going to be okay? Yeah, he's a gigantic juggernaut. Why wouldn't he be? Yeah, that's not going to bother Mowgli at all. It is actually Pomotaro who's now going to be on the wrong side of yep. the map here. Of course, we'll have into the fray up in about five seconds. So yep. Kanji use that to try and juke around, but that's if he can survive. Yeah, but see, Great Kali has boots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I was expecting Palmatar oh, to go the, the other way over the wall, but <laughs> up fire, no, up fire, don't let him go. There we go, first blood going through, passing ships in the night perhaps a little bit right there, but up fire will actually pick up the first blood. At the same time, Net Toilet has a, a heck of a lot of hit points missing himself. Yeah, that was a huge juke there from Palmatoro almost paying off if it weren't for that pesky roamer doing his job and roaming around the map. But uh, a big difference there is that Great Kali again, he had boots. Mm -hmm. All Palmatoro had was into the fray. He's fixed that now. Yeah, definitely uh, getting boots early is uh, 
you know, everybody does it. You see, literally the only person thus far that doesn't have boots is Upfire. He has a Vanguard. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thing to notice here, Net Toilette, first item. Well, okay, after the boots, but first actual real item, Tension Bow. Yep, 350 into the game, picking up that Tension Bow. Really just wanting to push a lot of pressure onto uh, Kavalifar in this lane. That's Tension Bow is an early game item with that just flat damage on it. Obviously, it falls off super hard late game, Oof. but early on, it's going to be doing a ton of work for him. Well, the Great Kali getting some good pot shots there on top of the Rona. Core collapses, uh, not not quite yet. Haven't uh, seen a lot of you know, return damage from Kavalifar so far. The Heliogenesis have actually been doing really good for the farming, 36. Uh, but Nets will add again, he's dancing around. This is what Rome said. You put him in that lane, he has the mobility. Uh, he's not going to get hit as often. And he's actually been uh, farming very well. 46 now compared to his opponent of 36. Yeah, definitely a, a bit of a lead there. It's not game breaking or game changing or Ooh, anything, but it is still nice. That's the tension nice. bow right there. Yeah, that is definitely a tension bow. One hit dropping a good chunk of hit points off of Kavalifar. And as you can see, everyone's just kind of more or less uh, keeping to themselves with that uh, fabulous shot over the entire fold. But one kill, nil. It's uh, about 800 gold or so towards Rebirth of Empire, but again, anybody's game. Mowgli, well, all right, can he shrug off, shrug off that? Looks like he can. Well, that's actually going to be some fantastic damage on top of the Ringo. Celeste able to take that one home. Mowgli's got to be happy about that. Yeah, you know, it wasn't quite the forced the cord into a core collapse, but that's probably the next best thing, pulling him in with that, uh, the quibble, and then just enough to get that core collapse down. Really, really nicely played there by Kavalifar and Mowgli. All right, so Great Kelly is going to get some pot shots here again on top of Mowgli, but he's a big guy. He can just easily shrug this one off. Dragon or uh, Fly, I don't know. He just swats him out of the air regardless. And Rebirth of Empire, well, uh, wasn't exactly the engage they were looking for. And again, like Mowgli just not really caring about some of this. Rebirth of Empire not going to find an angle yet. Yeah, he's got so much HP already, and it's still very early on in the wow. game. The thing that's interesting to me is going to be where he, they decide to put skill points. Obviously, he's got two in each at the moment, uh, but will he be going for which you know of those two is going to get the overdrive? Will it be onto that A ability so it turns into a stun, or will he instead go for the... I mean, that's what I expect to happen because it's that's just... Why wouldn't you take a stun if you could get with stun? Yeah, of course. But, We'll have to see uh, where he does this time. Oh, to Net Toilet, twirling silver. Is that going to be enough there? It's a snipe and a half with the Solar Storm. And Kavalafar going impressive. Has uh, two kills. In fact, both kills now to his name. But now with a 2v3 advantage, this is going to be a big collapse on top of that gold mine. And, uh, you know, will Great Kelly and Upfire be able to do anything about this? Oh, so close, but no cigar. Yeah, they don't get the payout. They do get some serious damage onto Kavalafar, but not enough to go, warrant going in for a full-on fight. So small advantages being picked up currently by Media Pixel. Yeah, one kill leads into another, then a gold mine, and all of a sudden you're up 500 gold over your opponents. Great Kelly will find Mowgli, but uh, it, now who's actually stuck with who here? Big stun as uh, Mowgli, I think, is actually being left out uh, in, yeah, left out to dry with a Kelfire crew coming into it. Yeah, that was uh, definitely the team deciding, you know what? Uh, We'll see you later, Mowgli. We'll, we'll talk, I'm talk to you in about 10 seconds when you respawn. That was a pretty easy kill picked up by Rebirth of Empire. And again, a fairly slow pace to this game. It's not quite as slow as the gold mine is actually going to be yeah. stolen away here. Yeah, Tiny gold payout, but again, the vision is what teams mostly look for. There. That's one of the most, uh, or at least one of the faster turnarounds I've ever seen on the gold mine. Gold mine into a kill into the steal. Yeah, that's. it doesn't often happen because usually you teams do want to wait, mm -hmm. let the gold mine accrue a bit more gold before they go for the steal. But when you have the opportunity to take it, and especially if you're confident in your ability to defend it, you might as well just go ahead and grab it right away. Because again, if you can hold it, you'll get that big, big payout at the end. The Great Kelly picks himself up that frost burn, but not to be outdone. We do got a Serpent's Mask and Elf Fountain uh, coming out here for our Mowgli. So. If you thought he was hard to kill before, guess what? It's a little harder now. Yeah, Fountain also there on Upfire as well, so both teams will have that big regeneration uh, available to them. And like I said, it's still a, it's a slower paced game still, but yep. it's not quite the uh, the two kills at six or 
two to three kills at six minutes that we had in game one, but now we might be getting a few more. No, oh, big gauntlet going out. It's going to keep the team here. Solar Storm goes through, but Upfire is actually still fairly healthy. Great Kali into the back as well. No Dragon's Breath as the Red Mist tears right through the team here of Rebirth of Empire. And now it into the frame is going to be an ace for Media Pixel. And they look so healthy after that as well. It's like Rebirth of the Kingdom wasn't even there. Yeah, that was an absolutely dominant fight. And it's kind of surprising to think that they won that fight so decisively, uh, but it's really just all about the uh, the fact that Great Khali couldn't really get anything off there. Yeah, so that is something of a little bit of a weakness of this combat, at least in my eyes. You gotta you gotta do the big wind up of the ult there for Scarf and for Net Toilette. Yeah. That's a lot of time to be, uh, you know, if you're going to go in with that gauntlet, you need to already have, you know, that Hellfire Brew kind of going with him. You can't take the time, especially with Arona. She's going to jump you. We're going to have that red miss. Core collapses and Mowgli himself. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't think those ults are really going to hit that mark if they're going to be after the fact. Yeah, you have to basically coordinate with the Roamer. Upfire needs to say, all right, guys, I'm going to be going in with the gauntlet. Both uh, Great Kali and Netflix need to start queuing up their ultimates at that time so that the gauntlet can go down and both ultimates Whoops. can get thrown out. But that's going to be oh. Net Toilet actually getting away from that. Mowgli, yeah, he it did not actually force any accord there. Yeah, he tried to. It, it was, but uh, going on to a nice long cooldown now should give them a little bit of a respite. There goes the Hellfire Brew yeah, onto Kabalafar, but the Fountain of Renewal is just going to be popped and he's going to be able to heal up through it. Uh, yeah, but he's still going to be a little bit under half, which means that there's not going to be any more aggression out of this. Already now down that Force Accord and having Kavalfar, one of their, you know, artillery cannons, so to speak, uh, kind of out for the fight, it will now be, uh, again, a little bit more of a respite. But that's going to be that Eve of Harvest now coming to Kavalfar, and maybe that will be something of a difference in the next set of fights. And we see, again, Mowgli picking up multiple minion candies. That's one of the things we've noticed about them a lot is it's not just minion candies being used on the gold mine. They use it in the lane very frequently. And even if it's just a little bit of extra damage in a fight or a little bit of extra damage onto the turret, it's still extra damage for just a pretty small amount of gold that you invest into it. There's a good lesson to take away from uh, Vainglory in terms of uh, day number one, SK Gaming in their sets were continually down kills, down several thousand gold, but they were the ones that actually took the objectives and they were the ones that still won the games. That's how they got into that third place match here on day three. But, you know, again, kills, it, it's a tool uh, in order to get, you know, to finish up, but it's not the biggest part of this. The, the farming, the kills, it's all about turrets. And you get those turrets down, you get to the crystal, you take that crystal, it doesn't matter what the kills, it doesn't matter what the gold difference is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, seeing those minion candies, it has actually been quite a few different teams using them as a tactic here. Yeah, Mowgli is probably the biggest user of it that we see. More, I think more minion candies out of him Ooh. than anyone else Missed has again. up Force Accord. Once again, not quite going to connect. And uh, Mowgli, maybe he is human after all in this fin. Aw, oh, nuts. Oh, he's only human? All right, off that pedestal he goes. But 5-2 for kills. The pressure is still definitely there. Uh, but here comes the gauntlet now. That's a core collapse and the snipe on top of Great Kelly. But there comes the fire now as well. Pomataro, he might be able to just... Uh, keep himself going through it, but Kavadafar is out. He was the big focus target and a much better coordination of ults this round from Rebirth of Empire. Empire is not looking so healthy. Mowgli though returns the damage. Pomotaro jumps in and now it's not going to be looking for good for Rebirth of Empire at all. The Great Kelly likely not to get out of this one alive, especially with Mowgli right there. And of course those red mist, the big <laughs> the anchor smash. And Mowgli helps out for the 2-0 return with Pomotaro, but at the same time, Upfire did get away. It's not an ace, but still a heck of a game in engage. Yeah, and Media Pixel, they are just taking small advantages off this. They win each fight just a little bit at a time, and that's all you really need. They aren't going to get a whole lot off of that one in particular. However, it's, you know, yeah, we always talk about how it matters more of what you do after a fight as opposed to the fight itself. But at the same time, there's still the mental aspect too. If you are constantly going into fights and just losing them, you know, two to one, 
2 0. If, if you get aced, if it's happening over and over again, you just slowly start to think, man, we just can't fight against these guys. And it's a terrible spot to be in mentally because it just leads to fights going even more in the opponent's favor. Now, despite uh, the heavy aggression coming up from Media Pixel and seven kills, it's only about 2,000 gold between the teams. One turret advantage there as well. Kraken, about another minute and a half off. But. Uh, you know, it's still pretty much anybody's game. Rebirth of Empire, they've been trying these engages, but as you said, if they get a little bit more shaky in that mentality, it could definitely not work out for them in the long run. That being immense said, gold another gold immense gold payout is going to go the way of Media Pixels, and they once more are just more or less in control of the map. Yeah, they're, again, they're controlling the pace of the game. They're determining when fights happen and where they happen. They have just their ability to move around the map as a unit it reminds me a lot of, you know, over in North America when we would talk about Vaughn and the fact that they just always, it seemed like they were just a hive mind going around the map. That's very similar to the impression I get when we watch Media Pixel. So Rebirth of Empire, they did put that Ringo in lane. His first item was that Tension Bow. He does have a Sora Blade to go with it, but one, four, and one, despite keeping up with the minion score, he hasn't really gotten a ton more done, has he? Yeah, here comes the Hellfire Brew as they're trying to push in that turret. Again, just being used to get oh. them off it, but there's oh. the force to core. Yeah, so very close oh. with the cork left, but the damage is absolutely real. Net Twilight still actually hanging on. 500 crit says no. And Great Kelly with that Dragon's Breath, unfortunately, just not getting the damage they needed to this round. Finally, we hit that anchor. It wasn't quite the supreme combo of the core collapse. He did actually miss it out, but it doesn't matter in the long run. That's Probably just gonna be another turret. Yeah, Mowgli can just tank up this turret for days as looking going in, and that turret is down. Kraken that too, is now two turrets taken, and yeah, Kraken is available. They, I don't know if they want to go for it right now because everyone is alive. However, there is no ultimate for Up Fire or Great Kali or Net Toilet. So no ultimates against them at all. Yep. Uh, at the same time, the Force of Court is coming back to this. Of course, Palmatar on the Red Mist. Not exactly a heck of a cooldown there. And 20 seconds for Kavalfar. <laughs> it's uh, going to be actually looking real good for Media if they do want to try to force this in the next minute or so. Yeah, and they are now starting to get the infusions as well. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on. You know, when teams start buying infusions, it's either that they're max level and have nothing else to spend their gold on, typically. or they're looking for a fight. Also typically, yeah. 8-3 though for score, and what, five and a half thousand? Pamataro, he popped those boots. Uh, no, he didn't, I lied. Uh, either way, <laughs> he looked it looked like he wanted to rush in. Unfortunately, there was just no real team to do it all. And you don't actually need to chase down your opponents. That's what you got Mowgli here for, and here comes the anchor, but it's expertly dodged, and I think Rebirth of Empire is just gonna try to bring it back to their turret here. And it really does look like Rebirth was ready for this Finn pick to come out here in game two. They did ban it away in game one, but they've been able to actually dodge out quite a few of these forced accords, but it's still just not enough thus far as they are Boom. still behind. There's the Hellfire Brew going out again, just to try and force them off this turret, but those Heliogenesis oh, coming over the wall. And the and snipe. Solar Storm, a little... Sort uh, of a snipe. A little ambitious, I think, on that solar storm. Off the wall. Yeah, it still actually hit uh, up fire, but unfortunately it just wasn't the bigger damage that they were looking for. Uh, Kavalfar, however, he's been a consistent target of the Hellfire Brew. He has been using those reflex blocks uh, very nicely. He has only burned, I think, once out of three. But at that, you know, that being said, we haven't really seen this big cohesive, uh, you know, engage from Rebirth of Empire. Yeah, they're getting down the gauntlets, and they are doing actually really good with the Hellfires, but Past that, uh, they haven't really been able to kind of seal the deal on anyone. Yeah, it's just been a rough go of it. And now the Kraken is going to be started here by Rebirth. But here comes, uh, or by PD Pixel, here comes Rebirth. All right, Gauntlet and Dragonfire. Great Kelly going forward. But again, the damage looks shaky. Net Twilight into the back. He's, he was a big target. Palmatar does chase him down. Another Red Mist and the core is going to be enough. Kavafra and the Snipe does massive damage. The ring goes out. Up fire is the only survivor for his team. And that is, again, going to be a big engage for Media Pixels. 10-3 for score and a Kraken coming down on these last three turrets. Yeah, they will at the very least be able to get one of these turrets. They'll be able to get past that choke point pretty much guaranteed. And we'll have to see uh, if, if they can go even further than that. So Mowgli immediately, I mean, people start buying infusions. You can see it here on Pomotaro. He actually has his own. He buys candy. And there it is. The, the uh, buffed 
minions, and candy. This turret had no chance. Yeah, so they actually get that first turret before the crack team there. Ooh. A huge force to core. Yeah, absolutely, but there's no core collapse to go with it. Does not matter. We got the spin in top of the Beyblade Master of Pomotaro and two more kills going his way. Net Toilette is the only oh. defense, but the Frost Burn means he is in range of a lot of these Heliogenesis. And oh yeah, that's right, there was a Kraken. This is going to look like game number two is going into the Media Pixel Esport Pocket. And it they won it pretty much the exact same way as they won game number one. A little bit slow and steady at the beginning of the game. It looked very even. Ace. And by the end of it, though, they just, it's like they hit.